All right, I'd like to get your views on this controversial issue of Afrobeat just being just nice music, dance and have fun, and not speaking to the, the um, situations that Africans are facing, the struggle, the, the social issues in Africa, as did reggae. Reggae did this, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. Um, could you, do, do you take so, it first? I Please. disagree with Budget because there's a lot of songs, like hundreds of songs that speak on the issues that happen in Africa, but they're not as commercial or as loud as the songs that we were all familiar with, yes. if that makes sense. So it just takes deeper research to find out those songs. But and, are we talking about Afrobeat in particular? Afrobeat, The big yes. popular Afrobeat that is burning yeah. the world down now. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying that there are topics like those yeah. Yeah. Um, in Afrobeat, yeah, but they're not getting the... The same recognition. Okay. So it will get its recognition in its own world, but it wouldn't be on US radio. It wouldn't be on the platforms that we, the generic people, just listen to, okay. if that makes sense. But even though this music's fun, it's still a movement to connect um, people with African heritage to their roots, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, African yes. origins. So especially with the African Americans, where we know their history, not, not all of them know where they're from, and they use the music to, as a tool to connect back to their roots. Yes. So with Joanna, I had a lot of messages with people telling me, oh, I'm going to do a DNA test. Um, or oh, I've done one already. It tells me I'm from Congo or Ivory Coast or Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that itself is a whole movement. Although Joanna, I'm not you know, singing, it's not a serious song. Yes. But what the impact is serious, if yes. that makes sense. Yes. So it's not necessarily about the topic. It's more about people taking in the African music yeah. because before they didn't really take it in, but now, you know, they're making that connection. And like Marcus Garvey said, he, he wanted to do the same thing and he called it the repatriation movement, mm -hmm. which was to bring African-Americans back home. So we're doing that with fun music mm -hmm. and in a less patronizing way, saying, yes. you need to come back home, you're from Africa. We're making them dance enjoy the culture, come to festivals in, in Africa every December, it's crazy. And that's what's happening now, and it's just in, increasing and improving every time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, I think Afro <laughs> said it best. Yes. I mean, I didn't watch the Buju interview, but what I can say is between Afro and dancehall, I just think that you do have to do your research. There is many talent out there that are speaking uh, positive things or are speaking about history or are speaking about moving the culture or the music forward in a different light. Mm -hmm. Same with dance or you just have to do your research so I mean I can't really elaborate too much on what Buju was talking about but me personally I make sure that I do my research and I look out for different artists and I listen to those sounds, I listen to those types of music you just have to want to, that's mm -hmm. all it is. Alright, so let, yeah, I, I guess what, what Buju is trying to say here is that there's so much more that, that um, there's so many more barriers and, 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 and stuff to, to deal with as right. it relates to people of African descent. Mm. And while Afrobeat burns the world, it ought to be speaking to, speaking their truth in mm. music where possible. And because reggae, for the first 10 years of reggae, mm. it was just nice, yeah, rock steady. Yeah kind of vibe. And so it's not like reggae started out with, with like that. Mm. Reggae, after the first 10 years, changed in the 70s and started to look at social issues. I don't think anyone, including Buju, mm -hmm. wants there to be any rift between Afrobeat yeah. and, and reggae or dance or, you know what I mean? But a genre yeah, as a powerful genre. as Afrobeat and what it's doing and its reach at the moment. Yeah. There's so much more. Um, correction mm. to be done about what is do what was done to us as a right. people. You know what I mean? Um, in the 70s, mm -hmm. Rastafari leading took on the world with our troubles. Bob Marley and the Whalers and all of these guys were serious 
in their quest to get to get their rights to be to coexist and all of that. So they were speaking loud in reggae of the 70s. Mm -hmm. After the first 10 years of rock steady and those, yeah. when it became reggae in 69 and at the turn of the, new, of, of the 70s, it started to change. Africa was always, mm -hmm. all, was always the topic. It's yeah. always about freeing Africa and justice for Africans and ju for the continent. J reggae music never relent everywhere they went. The freeing of Mandela, for example, when the world changed its mind about the, the apartheid things and started to cool um, in, its, in its sanctions against the, the white regime. The reggae artists of Jamaica were still fighting, fighting for the freedom of Africa, of, in particular South Africans and, and Mandela. And when he came out, this was the first official visit in the West, really, was Jamaica, to say thanks, the National Stadium in Jamaica. He came and he said it, because he knew the impact of, of, of reggae's cry in true music to the world, to free Mandela. And these are, I suppose, are the things that Bougie I Another issue is out. the the machines pushing the music are not going to they don't tend to push the music that have serious topics, yes. if that makes sense. So all the labels that are signing songs, not just with Afrobeats, I think with all genres across the board, they're going to sign what's trending rather than um, songs that are speaking on serious issues, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I understand the, the labels. They're just corporate entities. But what we, want, we don't want to happen is that there is any kind of standoff between Afrobeat and reggae, or Jamaica and yeah. Africa. No, that's yeah. what... We don't want that bridging, because that yeah. is... Some people are pushing that. Yeah. And the detractors are pushing that. It used to be day. heavy, yeah. like, 10 years ago in London. London, yeah. So when, we, when I heard the Bujak um, interview, I was like, this could re-spark what we've been building or yes. trying to avoid for these last two, um, 10 years. So I think it's more his delivery. I don't think he meant it like that. I think he just meant that he wanted to hear it more. Yes. Commercially. He wants, yes. yes. He wants messages to be all over that, the genre because it is that big. Yeah. It is being consumed globally. And the world is still not level. Africans are still suffering. Black people all over the world are being discriminated against are still fighting for a place, and especially the West. So we, if he's saying, say something Afrobeat. That's what he's saying. But I say to him, too, that reggae, Afrobeat is still very young. This is what I say to Virgil, still young. To ten, the first 10 years of our own unique genre, reggae, um, which which was the name that we were put on the music in six, 1969. But you, the, I think that the entire body of work is reggae. So to, to me, the name came in 69. But we didn't really get militant musically until the turn of the 70s there were coming up, right? Yeah. So, so that you and Afro, Afrobeat is still young. So mm -hmm. we don't want there to be a, a distraction here between Jamaica reggae, dancehall, and Afrobeat. That's the worst thing we could ever want. No, we want to be united. Collabs are happening. Yes. So there's a lot of Afrobeat artists collabing with dancehall or reggae. Uh, so that's been happening as well. There's no walking around Africa, Reggie. Yeah, yeah. Right now, Africa is on the rise, musically and otherwise. We don't want distraction. We want to be we want to, to make sure that we, we, we take advantage of what's going on right now. And not to be in, in confrontations mm -hmm. with ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Anyway, that, that's one it. People. But, <laughs> yes, that's, no one people. Yes. One people. So we, we are, OK? And we are not talking about reverse racism either. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is equal rights for all people. It's not like Jamaicans that reggae never target no racism. If you listen to reggae, Reggae artists are always speaking to humankind. Hence the term one love. One love for all. So it's not like 
black people must now get militant and all of that. It's all about for full justice to be done to the people, the displaced people of Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah.